May 1893. Today, at breakfast, I received news from a Mr. Owen in Bristol. A ship had been procured for my voyage to Africa. Now I could hear Christ's great clarion call. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Lord be praised. These glad tidings have set the entire household into the most excited activity, even my mother. So recently, risen from her sickbed, has spent the entire morning supervising the packing of my trunks. But what of the ship that will carry us to Africa, just as the lowly ass bore our Lord into Jerusalem? With his usual apprehensiveness, which, as after the affairs at the inn, I have come to view as genuine concern for my own safety, Mr. <coughs> Owen informs me in his letter that though the ship may not be the greatest, nor the soundest in God's creation, it's too it will, God willing, bear us and our equipment to that heathen shore. How my heart soars! The weaker the vessel, the greater the glory to God! Weakness does not hinder! Lack of faith does! Well, Mr. Owen, there below the horizons, six fair Albion, what lies next? is darkest Africa. Aye, and black and heathen it will be too, sir, for not half as evil as the arts of the men that loiter in the foxhole now, sir, with but one word on their lips. And what word is that, Mr. Owen? Why, ropeney, Father Peters, ropeney. Can it be, sir? Does not obedience, respect, love and loyalty not fall from this ship, even as does England's coastline now? Aye, Father Peters, they do. And I for this dear as long as your arm of reasons why. Namely, one, you don't let us invite no grog. And two, two, you're always putting a hand up first in class and asking for extra homework, which really gets up my nose. Enough, Bison. You're a lazy, mutinous crew that cannot see farther than your own bowsprits. I go about my heavenly father's business, and so won't you. We must not forget our mission to carry the good book to these heathen shores and to bring Christ's glorious knowledge to the ignorant savages of Africa. Is that your final word, Father Peter? You won't meet our demands? No, Benson, I'll meet them with a sword. Why so? 
on the ground, Zoe. Big Chief also say, on the other hand, White Massa not make Big Chief ship shape from Bristol fashion. Big Chief's folks make White Massa. And White Massa's faithful black servant choose truly. Very dead, boss! Then take the good book and place the Big Chief's hand oh, upon it. What evil paper shall we stand for, Madison? We must look down upon this black and savage sinner and have mercy upon him. Why stop the drums, Owen? Look, no, oh. We have missed him both this time, Massa! Big Chief in God and snuffed it! Don't <laughs> buy me, Owen! For today, we must surely perish. Fourth of May, in the year of our Lord, 1895, exactly two years have passed since we began our journey. For today, the drums stopped beating. The Lord, in his infinite wisdom, has chosen to take Onwami, chief of the Sintu, unto himself. And thus we stood, myself, a child of God, and Owen, my faithful black helpmate in Christ, before the slowly advancing tribesmen. Naked they were, and devilishly painted, bearing naught before them save their pipes, from which at some unseen command, they would shoot their venomous darts. Unseen, yea, to my eyes, but not to Owen's. For, as the first dart sped toward my naked breast, ha! ha! That good fellow threw himself before me oh, and no. took the dart within his own heart and dying fell. Ugh. True friend. True friend. <laughs> Black body bleeding blood. Black body bleeding blood. As noble as any best in the Christian man. Christian man. How noble was thy sacrifice. <laughs> and yet in vain. For following came the deluge. Oh, no. Dart upon dart pierced my body. With every dart I breathe my breath heaved a hundred quills. Dug in with death and dying. And live I still. Uh, uh, And yet, I still lived. <laughs> <laughs> 